Welcome back to In the Can, a very exciting film here premiering at the Sundance Film Festival. It may sound familiar to many of you. It's The Raid 2. Director Gareth Evans is with us, and uh, you're back for more, huh? Yeah, good to be back. Yeah, good and we've it. got uh, pretty much the entire cast, uh, at least those who survived. Uh, <laughs> I'm not giving anything away. Julia Stella is here, Arifin Putra, Iko Uwais, and uh, Yayan Ruyan. Welcome, everybody. And uh, I, let, me, let me start out by saying, first of all, I mean, the, the first movie, uh, premiered here a couple of years ago mm -hmm. to great acclaim. Uh, Joe Davis, uh, our, our, our uh, host in the morning, was just raving about it. He thought it was the best film he'd seen at the, at the festival. <laughs> I can't disagree with him. <laughs> but apparently it was good enough to bring it uh, back and uh, flesh it out and, and make a second one. What uh, started the process for you? Yeah, so um, actually the script for the second one existed before the first movie. It's kind of weird reverse engineering on that. But, mm -hmm. um, but we tried to get the funds for it made and we could get it made back then about three or four years ago. And so after the success of the first film, I was able to get the budget in place for this. So it was just a case of going back through and rewriting about maybe 30-40% to kind of make it fit as the sequel to The Raid 1. So really the first one was kind of the economically sound version that you needed to make before you really wanted to make yeah. the second one. Yeah, and also, I mean, like it, was, it wasn't just like a budgetary thing, but I feel now after, you know, having experienced the first film, Maranta, and then The Raid 1, I probably wasn't ready to make the Raid 2 back then. Mm. So now after learning a lot from the last two films, I feel like now we were already ready to do this film. Well, and apparently this film too kind of expands, you know, both geographically. I mean, the first film took place in a building. It was, yeah. it was uh, you know, th that was really a lot, of, a lot of the suspense of the film. This one spills out into the streets, so to speak, and, uh, and has, a, has a little more life, uh, you know, so, so obviously it's a, it's a bigger film. Yeah, I mean, I guess in a way what, what I've always tried to want, what I've always wanted to do is to kind of mix um, martial arts purely as an action discipline, but with other genres of film. Mm -hmm. So in the first one, it was a survival horror movie that just happened to have martial arts as the action discipline. And in this one, we wanted to do like a gangster crime movie. Right. So it meant we had to increase the scope and the scale and take it out into the streets. Let's, let's talk about the process a little bit. Many of you are back from the first film. I mean, what was the difference really between making this film and uh, the, the first project several years ago? Erfin? Well, I wasn't in the first one, so no. I think uh, it's Iko better if Iko or Yayan yeah. explain right. it. Gimana perbedaan yeah. first movie? Uh, it's, it's way different because it's more aggressive, more complex with the choreography fight and the uh, drama also. Yeah, did you feel like you felt more at home? Mm. Was it uh, like the first film, maybe you had one under your belt, so to speak, you had the character locked yeah. down, you had the idea, yeah. you worked with Gareth before. Mm -hmm. Was it? Did you find that the uh, choreography was uh, more intricate? Uh, did you step up the uh, the action, so to speak, or did you feel like you were still, you know, kind of the same thing that you were doing in the first film? Action will be complex. Yeah, will be complex. Will be so sad if I didn't come up. Yeah, um, it's more complex the choreography fight for uh, Brandel, Brandel, uh, Brandel part. Like the the first one is is more complex also, but the more like uh, stylish in the Brandel. Mm -hmm. And Arifin, I, yeah, I, what I wanted to really approach you with is, is you're coming into the second film not having been a part of the first film. So yeah. was, did you feel like you, you were behind it all? Was there a camaraderie? I mean, how did you fit in with the cast that had already worked together? No, I mean, they're all really nice guys. I Thank mean, you. Uh, they, <laughs> they, they, they beat you up. But sure. <laughs> but they do it with love. Yeah, they do it yeah, with love. Like, we love you, Finn. We love you. <laughs> um, no, so everyone's really nice. I mean, he's a hard ass. He's, he's like really perfectionist, but he's really, really good. And I, f I really trust his judgment. So when he says a take is good, then you know it's good. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, I didn't really feel a lot of like pressure. Oh no, this is a. I mean, I'm coming in like newly into this movie, into this franchise. Didn't feel like that. And also, the import, the the interesting part was that actually, um, I got offered this part also three years ago. Yeah, I think it was actually like Arifin and Julie actually. Yeah were both on my radar in the first version of the script like four years ago. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of uh, cool that we got to actually come back and do it and actually cast the guys in the role. So, so, so you actually approached on Raid 2? Before, before Raid, raid 1. Before Raid 1 so happened. The, the interesting part was that Gary was like, Finn, I think we have to do this other movie first, mm -hmm. The Raid, and just keep your fingers crossed that it's going to do OK. <laughs> and if it does OK, um, yeah, then you know we'll definitely do Brandau. So never, never has an actor rooted for a director he's never worked with before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I was like, OK, yeah, I'll keep my fingers crossed. And as we all know, it, the rate did pretty OK. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, then you know, Gareth called up again. He's like, Finn, are you still interested? And I'm like, yeah. yeah especially yeah. now that you've seen the first film, right? <laughs> yeah. How about you, Julie? What was your experience as you came into the second film? 
Well, um, what was really challenging for me is that I have no background of martial arts whatsoever. So in order to me to get this character, which is Hammer Girl, I had to um, do six months of training, which I did um, almost every day for hours with uh, Yayan and Iko. They were patient enough to help me mm -hmm. with the choreography. And yeah, that was physically really challenging for me. Was that, and, and let's talk about that a bit, because obviously in a film like this, you've got to have camaraderie on set. You've got to be able to feel like you're in a safe place. Yeah. Um, how soon, I mean, did you have to do a lot of work before the movie to get to know each other and to get to, uh, before you got on set? I mean, you'd already done that maybe with the first film, right, in a lot of ways? Yeah. I, I mean, like, Iko and Yayan, obviously, they're like brothers, I would say, yeah. <laughs> probably. Um, with uh, Julie, she trained for six months. I trained for three months. So, I mean, even before the movie started, we already hung out, basically, and we had Almost. a few projects together too yeah. okay. before, yeah. So we so, knew yeah. each other. No. I, I can't think of a genre that requires more trust. I think. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's not just like between like, the cast here as well, but it's also between all of the fighters. Right. You have to be able to trust each other so that if you do accidentally punch yeah. the person <laughs> in the face, <laughs> that they're not going to just swing for you afterwards. Which happened a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe with you, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe with you. That's why you got one takes. <laughs> so what, I, I, I'm very curious about. Uh, you know, this, this genre has been along for a long, long mm -hmm. time, but I think the Indonesian version, you know, the, the fact that we're seeing more films coming out of Indonesia uh, is, is really a strong message. Is, is this something that you're seeing from an industry standpoint? It's starting to emerge a lot more now. I mean, the action genre was pretty much dead about five years ago, six years ago. Now it's starting to emerge a lot more. A lot of people are starting to kind of give, uh, make, make these action movies now out in Japan. Why, why do you think it uh, is changed and resurging? box office maybe, I don't know, I mean... Well, the stories, I think, are better too, don't you think? Well, I mean, there, there are a lot of good filmmakers out there in Indonesia, and sometimes they, they, a lot of them work in lots of different genres. So we have, like, great filmmakers out there making really interesting thrillers, like about uh, three or four days ago, it was the premiere of Killers, done by the Mo Brothers, and that was like an, an intense movie and a really strong, high-concept film. Um, and those kinds of stories are, are starting to get made now, those kind of, like, edgy genre films are starting to get more growth now. So hopefully, if more producers take risks on those, it'll be easier for us to kind of like get Indonesian cinema out into an international audience. Right. Uh, the film premiered. Gosh, you know, we were talking about it. This, this this festival seems like it's a month long. Yeah. Just just a few days ago, uh, was it the first time that you had seen the film with a large commercial audience? Yes, yep. It was. What, what kind of reaction? Did you, I know you had a Q and A and some time with the audience after that. Uh, were you surprised by the reaction on anything? We were very surprised that we got a standing ovation at the end. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was very pleasant. <laughs> yeah, and the response was very positive. We were very excited. We were really happy to see all the respond mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was, excited. I was so nervous, though, because like, I mean, when the version we screened that night, we were still 85% done in our sound mix, and mm -hmm. one scene with VFX is still had to be fixed. So, you know, for me, it was horrible. It was like it's showing a child like, I gotta fix that the I didn't do that oh my gosh I can't believe that needs help yeah, yeah <laughs> so I had like a big laundry list of things at the end of the screen I was like I gotta fix it gotta fix this mm -hmm. but um, no the, the people kind of the people in the audience took to it responded to it in a big way and it was really cool because about like, I think about 75-80% of the audience stayed for the Q&A Mm -hmm. So like, and it was a big theater. That, that's so a big percentage, really, yeah. to stay for a Q and A. Exactly, and because it was the Eccles, it was this incredibly large the theater, biggest yeah. biggest venue in the festival. Yeah, that was yeah. overwhelming. So, were there any questions that kind of blew you away? I mean, were you able to answer everything? I mean, uh, everything was all right. We didn't have any tricky questions. There actually. wasn't like a you know how many ribs were broken, how many. Uh, yeah, we get those yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. We, get, yeah. we, we get asked how many people lived and died in the process mm -hmm. of making the film. So, how many people did die, by the way? Uh, about four or five. Four or five. Yeah. Good. Oh, that's pretty good. I think it's still okay. Yeah, it was six in the last one, which became better. You know? you, know, you guys have to put the claimer. No, no actors were hurt in the making. Of it. So that's not true, actually. <laughs> did you just have feelings? Yeah, it just well, that happens feelings. in every movie. Yeah. I mean, but. But seriously, did you have any major injuries? Is, is, I mean, that's something you got to think about, obviously, as you go into a film like this. Uh, we had like a couple of um, mild concussions. Um, what we do is, I mean, we have like stunts that look ridiculously dangerous in, in, in the actual film, but we try to find a way that we can shoot them where they're not as dangerous right. to perform and execute. Right. So it's a lot of like certain, sometimes camera tricks, mm -hmm. um, whether it's to do with the movement of the camera or the editing. So we try to find ways to make you feel like you're seeing something extremely dangerous, but then actually the reality is, is that it's more controlled. Yeah. But sometimes accidents happen. And, and that and that fine line you walk is 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 for those hardcore fans of this genre of filmmaking. They'll 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 see that 
You know, I mean, they, they know that they, they know that that's how it's made, right? But it's, it's we, I think we, it's a more discerning audience, don't you we, think? We mask it pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Well, the good ones do. The yeah. good ones do. <laughs> well, really excited about this film, the uh, Raid Two. It's here at Sundance, and uh, it obviously, I think, will have a long life after the festival. Congratulations, Gareth. Thank Congratulations you. Thank you very to much. our cast of Thank you. for Thank surviving you. the film. Mm -hmm. It's well not done. as easy as it looks. Not at all. <laughs> We've got a review of Camp X-Ray coming up after this. Stay tuned. More in the can.